Here we have another example of a unit feedback loop. This is the plant you are trying to control, and you have a simple proportional gain here. We have two questions to answer. The first one is the steady state error to the ramp input of R of S. And the second one is the value of K that results in no overshoot. Let's start with the first question. The first step is, of course, to find the transfer function Y over R. From now on, I'm going to skip the derivation of how to find a closed loop transfer function because at this point now, this operation must be trivial. By looking at this transfer function from the past examples, we should be able to tell that y over r is simply k over s squared plus 5s plus k. We are interested in the steady state error when r of s is a ramp input of magnitude a, that is a over s squared. We can now define the error function as the input a over s squared minus the output, which is this expression here, times the input a. So minus k over s squared plus 5s plus k times a over s squared. We know that the error in steady state is the limit when s tends to 0 of the error times s, so the limit of s times this entire function, I'm going to factor here a over s squared, and we are left with 1 minus k over s squared plus 5s plus k. So this s cancels one of these two s's. And now we cannot simply assume that when s tends to 0, this goes to infinity. We need to rearrange this expression here. So the error in the steady state is the limit when s tends to 0 of a over s times a common denominator here is s squared plus 5s plus 5 plus k, sorry. This times 1 is s squared plus 5s plus k minus that k. Now this k and this k will cancel, and we can now factor this s's. We have s squared plus 5s. This is the same as s over times s plus 5. Now this s here cancels this s, and the error in the steady state is simply the limit 1s tends to 0 of a times s plus 5 divided by s squared plus 5s plus k. And when s tends to 0, we are left with 5a over k. Interestingly, the higher k, the higher our control gain, the lower the steady state error. Now let's see what the effect of this control gain is on the percent overshoot. Here clearly, we see that as we increase k, the steady state error decreases. But it's very likely that if we keep increasing k, the overshoot will also increase. So let's analyze that aspect of the problem now. Now in the second part of the problem, you're interested in finding the value of k that results in no overshoot. If you plot this, if you look at the damping ratio of this transfer function for different values of k, we will see that the damping ratio can go from 1 to something smaller than 1, which means that the system that would be exponential would eventually become underdamped and oscillate before decay. So we can go from simple exponential curves like this to something that starts to oscillate a little bit to something that starts to oscillate even more as we keep increasing k. Also, can try to plot this in MATLAB by simply replacing k with certain values. The question is, what is the limit of k before the system starts to oscillate? A recurrent mistake that I see is trying to find this value of k by simply setting the percent overshoot to zero. Percent overshoot that we found to be 100 times the exponential of minus 
zeta pi over square root of 1 minus zeta squared. This doesn't work because this is expression here is only valid when zeta is between 0 and less than 1. So this expression, if you remember from the lecture, was derived for sinusoidal and exponential curves. So these two curves that you see here. If we say that this is equal to 0, a percent overshoot equals to 0 requires zeta to be greater than 1. If this is the case, greater or equal to 1. If this is the case, then this expression is no longer valid because we are out of the bounds here between 1 and 0. Again, this was is only valid when there are oscillations, there is an exponential and a sinusoidal component that only occurs when zeta is between 0 and 1. If you now want the system to have no overshoot, the condition that we want to meet here is that zeta needs to be equal to 1. That's a critically damped system. Anything is smaller than that will lead to oscillation. So this, again, does not work. Now, if you want zeta to be 1, we have to find a value of k that results in a damping ratio of 1. The standard form for the second order equation is omega n squared over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. And now we can match omega n and zeta omega n with this expression here and find their values and set zeta to 1. Omega n squared is equals to is equal to k. So omega n is square root of k. 2 zeta omega n equals to 5. Zeta is what you want to set to 1. So here you have 2 times 1 times omega n square root of k. This is equal to 5 k is equal to 5 over 2 squared. This is 6.25. When k is equal to 6.25, zeta is 1, the system is critically damped, the overshoot is 0. If k decreases, it is slightly lower than 1, then we will start to see overshoot. And you can now calculate that overshoot with this formula, but only in those cases. And if zeta is greater than 1, then this is still, it still holds. The system has no overshoot.